I'm Jack Dennis. I'd like to welcome you to our video, Our Favorite Flies and How to Fish Them. I'm here with my friend Mike Lawson and John Barr, and we're at a very famous place here, aren't we, Mike? Yep. The Harriman Park, which was once known as the Railroad Grand. This is your home. It's home. I've uh, fished this since I was a little kid. I used to fish here with my grandfather. This is the Henry's Fork, isn't it? Henry's Fork of the Snake, yep. Known to most fly fishermen all over the world. Oh, probably the most famous river in America nowadays. I'm from right over the mountain in Wyoming, just over the Tetons, about 80 miles away. So what do you fish down in your neck of the woods? Well, uh, I live just east of Boulder, about eight miles. I do a lot of trout fishing, obviously, and uh, I spend an awful lot of time bass fishing as well. We have some tremendous warm water fisheries in Colorado. We're going to talk about how you developed a lot of your patterns. And then you're okay. going to tell us about the Copper John, the secrets of the Copper John. Mike, what are you going to tell us about? Yeah, most of these uh, flies have been tried and tested, you know, these fish in this river especially, they don't, they don't care how many articles you've written or books <laughs> that you've written or, you got to do it right and that includes not only the presentation but also having the right pattern. And I want to let everybody know that these flies, even though we're from the west, these work all over the world. You know, it doesn't really matter where you're at. In this kind of water, this real slow-moving, crystal clear water, the fish really get a close look at your presentation and your pattern. So you got to have the, the correct all, all the way around. You got to do it right, and it doesn't matter whether you're on a spring creek in, in central Missouri or whether you're on a Pennsylvania limestone stream or or whether you're here on the Henry's Fort. In John's case of Colorado streams, they're very much like the eastern streams. In fact, a lot of eastern people will fly to Denver and fish the South Platte and think they're back east because it's so similar. John, I know you have a philosophy about flies. My feeling on flies is there are, for a given situation, there are a lot of appropriate patterns that will work. What an angler needs is to have a core group of flies you have confidence in. For a given situation, a beta hatch, PMD hatch, a no hatch, uh, if they're looking up for hoppers, you have to have your co basic confidence patterns to go to in a given situation. There are a lot of good patterns, a lot of, just like in life, there are a lot of right ways to do things. And if presented properly, that's the key, everybody's heard that a million times, uh, your patterns will work. I think what you're going to find out from this video is we're going to give you some ideas about why we've invented these flies and where you should fish them. And you're going to come up with your own idea. I think we better probably head downstream and find the rising fish and have you show us your favorite flies and how to fish them, both you guys. So let's get started. Hey, Mike. We've got about six or seven real quality fish down here, and they are feeding. I saw a couple of them take nymphs, saw their, the white of their mouth and uh, they're going to be very difficult fish, but uh, if anyone can do it, you can, Mike. <laughs> Look at those guys. Real skinny water, they're not rising. They're not rising at all. But you, this is probably, you probably have everything going against you, not one thing going for you except your, yourself. Mike, well, you gotta believe, got to believe in one. yourself. I'll tell you one thing I got going for me is this little nymph you gave me. Well, that try. little flashback beta major. That is a good looking nymph. All right, well, I'm going to sneak it. down there and okay. see if I can get a cast, and you kind of, you're going to have to instruct me, because I won't be able to see those fish okay. when I get down there. Somehow i got to get, to, if I could just get this fly out without spooking him. I landed it on him. That's my whole deal. Okay, but... didn't, that didn't spook. They're probably just a little deeper water. Okay, that could do some good. That could do some good. He's looking. Whiteback's looking. He, he moved a little to the side, didn't he? He gave it a... Maybe I th was hoping he was looking. Well, he moved that, that way. That was a good cast. That was a perfect cast. I'm casting further upstream. Yeah, probably, yeah, get, the it down, of the line. get it down to him. That's a good idea. Watch him now. Should be... There he goes. He, he moved over oh. like he took. Oh, oh! Oh, you picked it up. He was just just going over for it. It was about a foot ahead of him. I saw that. The merger evolved back in '75 when I was up fishing Nelson Spring Creek, and these fish were eating little yellow specks, and they were not touching the adult PMDs. 
and I didn't know what was going on. So I put a nymph on, caught this big old male, had a big old mouth, big old tongue, and he had a bunch of these nymphal shucks hung up on the back of his tongue with just the PMD partially emerged out of the shuck. And uh, so I went back to my motel room that night and tied up the emerger that, and I, and I went back the next day and caught every fish that I made a good presentation to. Uh, and I haven't changed the emerger since then. It's one of those flies fish don't get conditioned to it. And I, you can basically tie it for any mayfly, but most, oh, I just... most of the mayflies that we, that I, hatches that I fish are PMDs uh, and, and betas, uh, or trichos. It makes a good little trico, trico done emerger as well. And you just use the appropriate size. <laughs> there we go. All right. You know, believe it or not, this is the littlest fish in there. <laughs> that was the only small fish in that pod. <laughs> Those other guys, well, now it's Weed City. But I, I'll tell you, John, he moved quite a ways to yeah. get this fly. Yeah, he did. It's just normally I'd be happy with. I'm not so sure that big one didn't eat it. A fish like this, but. Uh, he just, you know, these little guys are usually a little more aggressive. They're a little cutty. No, it's a rainbow. Is it? And he's a nice, healthy yeah. fish, but he just came in there and took it right out from in front of that bigger fish. Mike, I'm not so sure that big one didn't eat it. Well, he kind of looked like he did. It, well, his mouth opened. Yeah. About the right about the where your nymph was, his mouth opened, so he might have eaten, eaten it and blown it out. Well, I'm going to keep him out of the weeds here and get some of this line. But he's a, you know, he's a small fish for this water. Yeah, but he's a quality fish. But he's quality. I mean, look quality at the earth on him there, John. And oh, yeah, it's a beautiful specimen. He liked that nymph. Yeah, he couldn't help himself. The irony of it, Mike, is I gave you that flashback. Yeah. And one would think in these conditions with the sun. Explain that, why this flashback seems to be a well do you know why I, I put that I, uh, I believe in it be because I read this book Spring oh, Creeks he's gone. Spring Creeks by Mike Lawson and in it I saw these photos of nymphs of emerging nymphs with a, a little silvery glow around them yeah. and I says I'm, I'm fishing nothing but flashbacks well, that's what I wondered is if you've observed nymphs actually emerging, it's incredible well, how much you, brightness. That was well done, Mike. And I'll tell you, those big fish are still out there feeding. Well, you want to take a shot at one of them? No, I want to, I, I'm enjoying watching the, the master at work here.